Hello, wonderful and beautiful people of God. This is your friend and your sister. You're welcome back to my channel, Elizabeth Mo. <laughs> about temptation we've done the first video second video third video this is the very fourth video and we've talked about um, understanding um, the way temptation works we've been looking at how um, what makes us vulnerable and now we're going to be looking at how to learn your own pattern of temptation like I said everybody has their own patterns so how do you learn your own pattern of temptation we all have patterns for example our fingerprints are very unique to us isn't it it's so unique to us you can't use my i can't use yours so this is my own pattern if you see my fingerprint this is my own pattern this is yours and this is yours. so there are some things that um somebody can use to tempt you that cannot be used to tempt me for example if you bring things that are so sugary before me guess what <laughs> i'll just be looking at it well, that, well, that's me holding, like, like, really, really holding myself. But if you dare bring to me the things like I like, like grilled chicken. <sighs> Sorry, your pot will be gone. <laughs> so we all have things that are unique to us. And you know what? The Satan knows this. Oh, gosh. He understands this so well. Do you know what he told um, God when it comes to Job? He told God, he said, if it's not, if it's not, if it's not because you are protecting Job, do you think he will still be calling your name? Because he knows Job. He knows people. He does know us. So if we are thinking in our own self and in our own um, mind that he doesn't know, uh -uh, you're very unique to him. He knows. He knows. So you've got to be really careful. Now, how do you understand your own pattern of um, temptation? You want to ask yourself, when am I most tempted? When are you most tempted? What time? What scenarios? Where? When? Is it in the middle of particular people or things? Who is with you at that time? What are you doing? What are you saying? What is going through your mind? At that time, you want to make a note. You want to take note of those things. When is this thing happening? Where am I? When am I being tempted most? Is it when I go to a particular party? Or is it when I sit at a particular table? Or is it when I eat a particular thing? When am I most tempted? You need to know those things. Now, what benefit do I give when I give in? Do I get when I give in? Now, for example, I know that is when I go to this um, party. Or for example, you might say, oh, it's when I go to a party and I eat pork. That is when I begin to... Um, that is when I get tempted a lot. Example. I'm not saying that is it. I just made that up. Example. Now, if that is the case and you give in to eating that pork at that time, what benefits do you get? Does it make you feel good? When you say yes, does it give you this relief? Does it give you comfort? Excitement? Confidence? What does it give you at that time? Whenever you give in, to all those um, pressures or whatever you're giving to these things, what um, temporary thing do you get? I mean, let me not use temporary for now. What do you get from it? Then secondly, check. Is it long-lived or is it temporary? Then you begin to make your choices then. Okay. Look at what Hebrews 11.25 says. It says, there is pleasure in sin for a moment. Tell me sin is not sweet. Oh, it is. <laughs> sin is not sweet the bible says it it says there is pleasure in sin for a moment so what do you want to do do you want to give in to that pleasure at that time it says it's what for a moment that means it is short-lived it is so temporary but there is pleasure in it or do you want to sit by the right side of god forevermore the choice is yours to make. How 
do I feel right before I was tempted? Before you were tempted, how did you feel? Before you gave in to that, how did you feel? Were you feeling discouraged? Were you feeling frustration? Were you feeling fearful? Were you bored? Were you angry? Were you lonely? You couldn't sleep insomnia? What was it? What was it that you were feeling? And then when you did it, what happened? So you need to know your emotional triggers. That's what I'm saying. You need to know your emotional triggers. What circumstances, what people, what situations, what experiences, what expressions. If you know these things, it will make you master your pattern of temptation. So if you know when, where, who, where, ba, 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 all those questions, if you begin to ask those questions, then you would know how to master your own pattern of temptation. That's the third step. Then, number four, you plan to avoid those situations. You begin to plan, make your plans. There's a saying that, there's, there's this saying that, if you can't stand the eat, get out of the kitchen. If you can't stand it, get out of the kitchen. If the, the, if, if, the, if the result of the temptation is so high for you, don't give in. Get yourself away from it. Make sure you're not tempted. Proverbs 4, 26 to 27, it says, plan carefully what you do. Avoid evil. Walk straight ahead. Don't go one step off the right way. So you're planning well. You're avoiding evil. And then you're walking straight ahead. You have known all those things right now. We've talked about this system. Now, you begin to plan. Your planning is starting at this time. So that's how you plan to avoid it with all the information that you have. Now, let's talk about crying to God. That is your survival fix. Your emergency kit is what? Crying to God. How do you cry to God? So in the survival kit, we have two things. Number one, you cry to God. Number two, you know and you use your scriptures. And this is the point where most of us get it wrong. You know your scriptures and you use your scriptures. Who are you quoting your scriptures for? You're not quoting the scriptures for your enemy. You're not quoting the scriptures for whoever. You're quoting the scriptures to yourself. The Lord is my, is my light and my salvation. I'm talking to myself. That is what will embolden me. That is what will make me powerful to go and face whoever I want to face. Not that when the enemy comes, you now start quoting, hey, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall now want, he must say, you're quoting it to him. What does he know? What's his business with that? So you need to know the scripture for yourself. Okay? You need to know the scripture for yourself. So you're not quoting that scripture for the another person or another thing. It is there to help you, Moriah. It is there to help you. Okay? It says, listen to Psalm, Psalm 111 verses 11 to 6. It says, Psalm 119 verses 11 to 6. It says, 11 to 16. Your word have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against you. So when you're using and knowing the scriptures, it is for you. Hide the word of God in your own heart. Why? So that you would not sin. It's not the time for you to start using the word of God and be, no, for your own self. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Me. The Lord will help me at the time that is right. Me. Psalm 91. Me. So you use it for yourself to help you. Now, how do you cry out? It says cry, cry out to the Lord is not necessarily um, a, long, a, a long conversation between you and God. It could simply be, God, please help me in this situation. Help! Look at Psalm 50 verse 15. It says, call me in the time of trouble and what? I will save you. I'm in trouble. God, please help me. Jesus, I need you right now. I can't do this thing by myself. 
You don't need to start going into a long conversation. You are at a desperate need at that time. It could be when you're in the toilet. It could be when you're walking on the streets. It could be when you're even in your place of work. You don't need to cry it out, shout it in your heart. Desperate measures for a very desperate situation. And God Almighty has said that he will answer us in times of trouble. So I'm going to stop here for now. And in the next video, we're going to try to conclude what we're saying. So bye-bye.